so here we are going to discuss about the coordination compounds so coordination compounds means we can see the methyl atom is there and the methyl atom is surrounded by some groups or group of atoms means at a single atom so group of atoms so in this chapter we are going to discuss about these kind of molecules that is coordination compounds okay so in coordination compounds so as i told you before here the methyl atom is there that is denoted by m and they are surrounded by some ligands that is denoted by l so the atom so the group of atoms surrounding the metal atom is commonly called a ligands okay so the terms in this coordination compounds we will discuss in the coming topics so before that i will give you one introduction regarding the coordination compounds means the metal atom is surrounded by some ligands so ligands means it may be simple atoms like chlorine fluorine iodine or it may be the molecules like ammonia nh3 means ammonia or h2o like any molecules may be there okay so these compounds are commonly called coordination compounds so in coordination this coordination compounds have variety of uses in industrial field medical field may or in the naturally occurring materials also they contain coordination compounds like hemoglobin chlorophyll so coordination compounds are very very important compounds in daily life and they are also very very important in the recent field that is the recent industrial field medicine field everything pharmaceutical chemistry okay so whenever a new compound is introduced we have to introduce some some theories regarding this compounds right so the first theory regarding the coordination compounds that is called werner's theory so as i said before the coordination compounds means one metal atom is there and the metal atom is surrounded by some ligands ligands means any atoms may be there or group of atoms means molecules may be there so in case of this coordination compounds the first theory regarding the coordination compound that is werner's coordination theory so according to werner's coordination theory the important thing is actually in 1893 is explaining this theory that is werner's coordination theory and according to this theory the coordination compounds normally have two types of valencies they are primary valency and secondary valency so primary valency means it is the oxidation state of the metal atom inside the complex so whatever the oxidation state of the metal that can be called as the primary valency and the secondary valency means it is the number of ligands surrounding the metal atom so here you can see one example cobalt atom is surrounded by six ammonia and three chlorine so here the three chlorine atoms are actually contributing to the primary valency that determines the oxidation state of this cobalt and other ligands they are actually behaving as the secondary valency that is the ammonia ligands are the they are actually surrounding the metal this don't say that here the coordination number coordination number means that is the number of ligands surrounding the metal atom coordination number means the number of ligands surrounding the metal atom but here we cannot say the coordination number is 9 because here six ammonia is there two chlor three chlorine atoms are there but these three chlorine atoms are not contributing into the coordination number or secondary valency they actually determine the oxidation state of the metal okay that is the thing regarding the primary and secondary valency and the reason is if you write the coordination complex suppose here i am writing co nh3 six times and cl3 so i won't write this three chlorine inside the coordination complex so this part is the coordination complex actually that is called coordination sphere and these three chlorine atoms are outside the coordination sphere means they are undergoing ionization other this complex is not undergoing ionization so here the coordination number is still 6 so three chlorine atoms are not included in this secondary valency so that is the difference between primary and secondary valency now the next one difference between double salt and a complex okay so if you come to the double salt double salt means when two or more chemicals combine means here double salt and complex we will think like that they are they are similar but they are not similar 
the coordination complex means the metal atom is surrounded by the ligand suppose n n is the number of ligand so in case of these coordination complexes we cannot split the coordination complexes into metal and ligand this is not possible but if you take a double salt we can split them into ions means if you take this one this is more salt so if you take the more salt we can split all the ions we can split all the metal ions but if you take come to the particular coordination complex we cannot split them into metal atom and ions before we have co nh3 six times right so cl3 so this is the previous compound so we can split these two compounds means when you split this one you will get the charge of the complex will be 3 plus plus you will get 3 cl minus ion means 3 chlorine will be ionized but this thing that is the thing inside the bracket we cannot ionize so that is a coordination complex but double salt means we can ionize everything when this this one is when this double salt is undergoing ionization we will get k plus ion l3 plus ion sulfate ions and water molecule but here you won't get cobalt ions and ammonia no this sphere the things inside the sphere they won't undergo ionization that is the difference between double salt and normal coordination complex okay so here suppose see what is the naturally occurring coordination compound we can say that is hemoglobin and vitamin b12 they are naturally occurring coordination compounds limitations of Werner's theory we can say they are not explaining the stereoisomerism they are not explaining the magnetic property and they are not considering the bridging ligands in the complex so we will discuss about bridging ligand in coming sessions okay so these are the important questions you can expect in your exams the naturally occurring compound as I said before hemoglobin vitamin b12 chlorophyll they are coordination compounds this is naturally occurring compounds okay so these are the important importance of coordination compounds but uh, the first theory regarding coordination compound is Werner's theory as I told you before but they have different different limitations first one they are not explaining anything about stereoisomerism they are not explaining the magnetic property and they are not considering the bridging ligands in these cases so they are the uh, different limitations of Werner's coordination